back, everyone. Have you ever had a burning question about sex or relationships, but you were too afraid to ask? Lots of us are, but Dr. Jess O'Reilly doesn't want us to be. So she wants us to be open about it, and she's here to answer some of those questions for you, the questions that have been sent in, asking for a friend, of course. Always. Always. Always for a friend. That's right. right. It's not me. So, so many questions to be answered. Let's get right to our first one, asking for a friend. How does one seduce a woman double your age? Ooh, I like that. I like this Sassy. question. Okay, because I'm getting to be double people's ages <laughs> at this point in time. So am I. But you know, regardless of age, I would say focus on how you want to make them feel. When people think about seduction, they think about the language and the body language and how you touch them. It's really about how does that person want to feel? Do they want to feel powerful? Do they want to feel admired? Do they want to feel mm. desirable? Do they want to feel challenged? What is it they're looking to feel? Yeah. Uh, because that's that erotic, emotional connection that's so much more important. So get to know a little bit about them. Yes. And then you can play with, I don't want to say play with the feelings, but look yeah. to evoke the feelings that feel best for them. You have to start with the psychology. Always. Because can you imagine just approaching someone and starting to touch them and it's like, oh, that's not what I like. Uh, absolutely. Like, no, 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 no. Like, you got to get into their mind. So I love that answer. That's a good one. Okay, next question. Once you go through menopause, your body and your emotions often change. How would you suggest raising the topic of exploring new sexual options with your spouse of over 40 years that likes the routine as it is now? Asking for a friend, of course. <laughs> okay, lucky friend. That yeah. You're looking out for them. You know, okay, so over time, our bodies change, our needs change, but it's not just menopause. It's not just what changes in terms of hormones and in terms of the physical. It's also that things get stale after a while. Oh, yeah. So some of us are more inclined to routine. Some of us want to break it. And I always suggest that you bring up these conversations in three parts. Okay. So start with the positive. What is it you already like? And be genuine and mm -hmm. reinforce that. Make space for them to share. Ask them, like, you know, is there anything you're into and then make your request. Don't frame it as a complaint, yeah. frame it as a request. So let's say you want to try using toys or you want to do something mm -hmm. that's a little bit different than you used to do because your body doesn't respond in the same way. Maybe you even just want to introduce a silicone lube. You're mm -hmm. not necessarily just going to bring it into the bedroom and say, I need this now, although yeah. you're perfectly entitled <laughs> to do that. But you might say, you know, I love the way it felt when we did this thing last Sunday or I yeah. remember that time many years ago we you know we were maybe flirting in the car you can remind them of what they've already done and that you've Smart. done together that you love and then you can say you know how do you feel about that or what do you think about that or what have you been thinking about lately? And then you could say, you know what? I've noticed that I've been feeling different uh, because sometimes, you know, partners will personalize and think that if you've had a change in libido or a change of interest, that it's about them. Guess what? It's not about you. Yeah. It's about your, your friend, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the friend. It's not me. Yeah, so I've got this friend. <laughs> and, and then you're going to make your request. You know, I'd love if we could try some slow touching, for example, of the full body. This is something yeah. that often we discover later into our lives that yeah. the full body is an erogenous zone. So maybe that's you make that request in in that kind of specific but natural way I like that because also it takes away from the you're right people get defensive and maybe you might feel emasculated or mm -hmm. maybe you might feel you know not feminine enough so mm -hmm. make sure that you are, are are saying can we add this and this is what I love and let's add this I love that yes okay I got another one for okay. you for we're, a friend for a, you have friend. a lot of friends I have so many friends <laughs> we are in a sexless marriage okay. it works for us okay. neither of us is interested anymore okay. with each other or with anyone else okay my friends keep trying to convince me that something must be wrong so my question is can you really have a happy relationship without sex that's what my friend wants to know mm, well it's not often that I can give you a short answer but I can hear yes Absolutely, you can have a happy relationship yeah. without sex if you're not being forced into it. If you're both consenting to this and it works for you, don't worry about your friends who are clearly projecting their <laughs> concerns and fears onto you. That's right, because there was a time when sort of the common idea was that if you're not having sex, obviously you're not happy. <sighs> that's, that's changed. That's evolved. Absolutely. If you want to have all the sex in all the ways, that's cool. If you want to yeah. have none of the sex, that's cool as long as you can let, you know, look for a compatible partner. That's right. If you're both on the same page, then it's right. Here's another question asking for a friend. My friend and her partner have been in a common law marriage for 15 years. She no longer enjoys sex with him. He is a smoker, and so if the topic of body odor or bad breath comes up, he easily gets offended. They have not been intimate for two years now. In spite of sleeping in the same bed, please advise her, my oh, friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a couple of things here. First and mm -hmm. foremost, I'm going to suggest that 
she focuses on herself and her mm -hmm. own pleasure. I think this is a really good time at any point in life, but especially at this stage of the relationship, to get to know your own body. Really yeah. spend time on your own pleasure, however you define that. Mm -hmm. And then for the issues that, you know, lead him to be defensive, body odor, breath, I think that you have to accept that sometimes you're going to upset your partner, right? If mm -hmm. something doesn't work for you, I, I think we have to remember that relationships actually are conditional. We love this notion of unconditional love, mm -hmm. but in adult relationships, it's about mutual respect and the effort to not meet every single one of your partner's needs, but to want to accommodate things that feel good for them. So it sounds like there's a dynamic here that, you know, you can talk to him on your own, but also you might want to talk to a counselor or involve a counselor to speak to the both of you. Totally. Oh, you answered that better than I would. I would have been like, stop smoking and then we can have sex. <laughs> like, come on, it's so easy. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Time for a break. Lots more City Lives still ahead. Stay with us.